the universe, space. Do you know about cats, both the animal and the musical? I doubt it. Maybe you'll learn about it on I Don't Know About That with Jim Jeffries. Welcome to I Don't Know About That with Jim Jeffries. I'm Jim Jeffries. Uh, the, the gloves are off. The gloves are off, people. No masks for us anymore. What happened was we were doing the podcast in masks and just people were unhappy that they couldn't see my face. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how much people loved my face. They love your face. They were devastated. This is shit. If I can't see his mouth, I don't want it. (laughs) I didn't know that my mouth was doing all the heavy lifting on my career. People have been reading your lips this entire time. So what I've done is so that you can all get angry at home, I'm wearing wacky pointless sunglasses (laughs) that don't block out anything. And I'm wearing a David Spade hat. You're like, dude, why David doesn't even follow you on Instagram? I don't know why David doesn't follow me. I always thought Does we he got, not? Yeah, we get along every time I see him. <laughs> done <a show>. Every <laughs> time I see him, he remembers my name and everything. <laughs> and and I think we get along all right. But David, if you're out there, give me a follow. Give me a follow, David. Give me uh, a follow. I follow you. I've even commented on some of your posts. I think you liked one of me comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm here with Forrest Shaw. Say hello, Forrest. Hi. Uh, yeah, we we mentioned in the first podcast that you and I have been like, but you know, basically quarantining together anyway. So we were kind of doing the. Yeah, we are already us. hanging out. Jack's here. Jack's my assistant. Yeah, I didn't. Sorry. Jack Jack's been coming over and doing things. I, I I still pay Jack on a regular basis. And what what work did you do this week, Jack, for all your money? I paid some bills. He paid some bills and <laughs> went and went to the post box. That's his week's work. <laughs> it's the best job Personal in the world. Shit. And I could have I could have gone to the post box myself, but I just need him to do something. Yeah. And then my girlfriend's like this, do you think Jack can mail some of my letters? And I'm like, oh, it's not in his job description, but I'll fucking make him do it. Oh, wait, I got a good idea. Why don't we have uh, people that listen to the podcast like give us suggestions for work that Jack can do? Yeah. Because oh, oh, yeah. you got you to fill the time, Jack. You I feel fill like the Jack's going to be sucking some dicks pretty soon. <laughs> Jack gets Jack gets the occasional email and writes me, check your emails, Jim. That's what he does, because I don't open emails. People email me, I just don't open them. I don't open me post either before, Jack. I didn't know there were so many bills to be paid. I have an outstanding lease on a car I haven't owned in years. Uh, Kelly Zabinski, yep. here she is. How are you? How's your quarantine been? Not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm ch- very chill about this. I yeah. like staying at home by myself. Oh, yeah. I'm a big, I'm a big fan as yeah. well. I, 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 the conspiracy theorists now that are just like, it's because the government wants everything. And now yeah. the conspiracy theorists have gone the other way. They've gone, it's because of the Democrats want to rig the election in November and they don't want you to go to the polls or something like that. This is the weird thing. Okay, I, I consider myself a moderate, but to all the Republicans, all the Trump lovers, right, Hey, you're in charge. <laughs> Stop bitching like like the Democrats are fucking everything up. You're in charge. You get to fuck things up. You're in charge. Right. Also, yeah, they're they're not even doing. Um, they're voting against like mail mail in ballots or whatever. It's like that would only affect Democrats really because Republicans are out there fucking in the streets protesting about like opening shit up. So it's going to be yeah. the Democrats that don't show up to the The, the, co- the comedy clubs have reopened. I see Brad Williams did a, a weekend somewhere. He's fucking, he's out there. <laughs> he's out there doing comedy. He's not, not afraid of anything. Any other comics on the road? Uh, I thought I saw one in Texas, but I remember, I think there's a couple clubs opening, but I'm not sure. Like I, th- I thought I saw like maybe Dusty Slay. Was that uh, in Texas or something? Yeah, like that? I hear that uh, Coconuts in uh, in Florida's open and uh, the Chuckle Hut in Tempe. So there is a so there the is road. a Coconuts in Florida. There you go. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> they they sell me fifty bucks from like ten years ago. And that's a true story. Ah, like, fucking Coconuts, <laughs> pay up. <laughs> that, that's the thing is, there's always like I I have a I have a, a dislike for bananas, but I um only recently since my son's been born. I I never physically touched a banana. I was afraid of bananas. And I went to therapy and stuff like that so I could be near bananas. And because (laughs) because my my son eats fuck all. My son eats fuck all. And bananas are good for you, right? And he eats bananas. And so when I was home with him, he'd be like, can I have a banana? And he can't open it up. He's a child, right? And I was like, fuck, he's got to eat some good food. So I had to muscle down. And now I can physically touch bananas. But before that, there was a comedy club, I think in New Jersey, called Bananas. There's two of them. There's one in New Jersey, 
and there's one in Cincinnati. One's called Go Bananas, and the other one's, I think, Bananas in New Jersey. Yeah. And fucking the whole backdrop is just bananas. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so I went there to perform, and I just, I couldn't, I was standing right at the edge of the stage. Trembling. I was, I was just not comfortable, and, and people would heckle, and I overreacted. Go fuck yourself! <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing better than one of those heckles where you just lose your shit. <laughs> So speaking of comedy, you got any dates coming up? I don't have any dates coming up. <laughs> but, but every week. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've got a comedy special coming out in either June or July. So, Boris, how about you explain the show today? How about we change things up? Okay. Well, uh, this is what we do on the show. Um, each week we get in a guest that is has an expertise in a certain field, and Jim does not know what the guest's uh, field of expertise is. And um, once we reveal what it is, we have Jim tell us everything he thinks he knows about that subject. And then we grade him to see, you know, on, on accuracy, believability, confidence. And, um, and the idea is that, you know, this is quoting, you know, like the pre-internet, uh, people could go out to bars and bullshit their way through things and pretend like they knew stuff if you had enough confidence. And um, as a comic, you have a lot of confidence and believability. And so that's something you probably did in your life. But now I've, that the internet is here, you're, the jig's up. So Yeah, a giraffe. I learned a new thing about a giraffe that I could really fucking add to it. I was watching... Uh, but no, but I don't think people know the giraffe story. because What they, happens they, they, they is they I used to tell when I was an unsuccessful comedian, no one knew who I was. When I was living in England, because of the accent, I used to tell girls, I don't know if I can get me too for this because I lied to women. I think you're allowed to lie to them, right? You're encouraged to lie to them. You're allowed to lie to them, right? Yeah, this is... So I used to tell girls that uh, I was brought out to London to work at the London Zoo because I specialised in giraffes (laughs) and I was one of the foremost experts in giraffes. And women love animals, but they know fuck all about giraffes. And so I dropped a few truth bombs that the tongue was so powerful it can rip the flesh off the human body. And they have the same amount of bones in their neck as we do have in the human spine i didn't <laughs> i didn't go as far as to find out what that number was <laughs> anyway, um, it's a bunch and then the joke was the joke was because their tongue was so powerful that's why you never see any lesbian giraffes plus the 69 is hard because of the long necks and, and they'd laugh and laugh and then and then and then they'd ask to come to the zoo and then i'd, I'd have to ghost them <laughs> but that would, be, that would be the second date. Yeah, we'll go to this second date. And... But, but, I, uh, but I found out something new about the drafts because Hannibal Burris was on, uh, he was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And mm. he was smart because he brought this bloke on. i just been watching. It was one of the Jeopardy champions oh, as right. his safety yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. A guy called Buzzy. Yeah. Buzzy's like this sort of Jewish guy with glasses that looks like if you drew a caricature of him, if you drew a real picture of him, it would look like a caricature that you drew at the side of a beach. Uh, okay. You Google Buzzy from Jeopardy and tell me I'm wrong. Anyway, yeah, I'll Google him. But uh, yeah, yeah. You know I'm right. All right. Anyway, so the, so what happened was what animal, when it's born, has a six foot drop? Oh yeah, it's a it's a giraffe. Oh. The giraffe falls six feet. Bang! And they yeah. Welcome to the world. Rude awakening. Bang! Give them what they want. Yeah, give them what they want. <laughs> What do you mean he'd be at a beach? Is it like in a beach? No, I mean like you know when you can see a character to a person. Like, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If it you, does look if like you draw a that, normal yeah. portrait of him, yeah, yeah. you'd go, oh, that's a weird character. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this looks like the actual of uh, what the character. Yeah, you're right. So it just look normal and they yeah, just look normal. And you go, yeah. Buzzy's a unique looking fella. Yeah. All right, well let's introduce our guest for today. Uh, um, Liz Thorpe, say hello, Liz. Say hello, Jim. Liz, hey, how are you? Liz Thorpe. Yeah. All right. So Liz. this is what we do, Liz. Uh, Good English name for you. Ah, she's she's down. Oh, she's, drinking. she's drinking beer in the middle of the day. That's how I know it's Friday. Ah, you know, right. Different from all the other days of the week. Wait, it's they right. all blend together. Yeah, because Thursday is heroin. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that kills your productivity midweek. No way. <laughs> mushroom Monday. Yeah. I, I, I've been having mushroom Mondays. No, it's so, a psychotropic and, Saturday. Come on, you got to align. No, it, right? no, I, do, I, do, I do mushroom Mondays and then I do weed on Tuesdays because of Taco Tuesday. And T- THC Tuesday. So it all works. Go. And then Wednesday... I do uh, wank Wednesday, <laughs> where I just masturbate all day, even yeah. if I'm at work. I feel like that's every day for you, though. It's just you oh, I tell you, I tell you what. In, in in Australia, if you're in quarantine, you got to go in for two weeks into a hotel that they just give you, and they put food at your door like you're in prison. The wanks you would have would be outrageous <laughs> for two weeks. You're not allowed with anybody else, and then they don't clean your room. They just give you a towel each day. 
Ah, yeah, that's living. All right, so let's guess what Liz does. Let's get to that. Uh, so Liz, this is a part of the show we call Judging a Book by Its Cover. This is a game Jim likes to do in general, judging mm. people by just the way they look. And so he's going to try and guess what you do, and he's going to ask you yes or no questions. You can answer yes or no to these. So go ahead, Jim. All right. Uh, do you work at a university? No. Okay. Uh, do you, Have you written books? Yes. All right, book reader. <laughs> book reader. I don't know if she's. Uh, I didn't I say. I didn't say I read them. Yeah. I said I wrote them. Yeah, you, you, you wrote books. Are your books primarily purchased by women? Um, probably probably more than fifty percent are purchased by women. Okay, so but I wouldn't say it's like so chick they're, lit. They're not porn. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> uh, so okay, so you, you depends you, who you ask, actually. Yeah. But you have, have you have you done a TED talk? No. Oh. Uh, this is, again, this is like a similar subject. You you really like this subject. Yeah, right. So some people say it's porn. I'm going to say that. So, because <laughs> yeah, no, right. you said some people say it. I'm going to say that you're a, a, an expert in sexual health. No, no. Is that, is that your guess? That's your that, would, that would be awesome. <laughs> that's, that's okay. I love how every time we tell him that he he loves the category, it's always porn. Okay, now wait a minute. If it's something, <laughs> if it's something I love, you invented pinball machines. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, yeah. Very... you birthed my cat. Close, close second, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, you are wrong, Jim, as usual. I don't think you're ever going to get that right, but it's fun to play. Uh Liz Thorpe is an expert in cheese. In cheese. cheese. Yeah. I love cheese. I know. <laughs> I, know. I, I, I love cheese, cheese. Cheese porn isn't like real porn, but. Ah, look, it is. Why do you think they put the holes in the Swiss cheese? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest cheese there is. So, so uh, Liz is, uh, she's like a, a leading expert in cheese in the country. She's authored a, a book, as you mentioned, the book of cheese and oh, the yeah. cheese chronicles i love cheese and also she has a youtube channel the people's cheese and on ig you can find her at liz thorpe that's with I'll, an e I'll thorpe cheese tell you how we'll my, repeat I'll, that again at the end too for you liz i'll do it again sorry okay. I, 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 oh, no 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 it's fine i was gonna but yeah the youtube channel is the people's cheese and on instagram it's at liz thorpe cheese l-i-z-t-h-o-r-p-e-c-h-e-e-s-e -E -E -E. we'll i'll tell you how much liz i love okay. cheese there's her name i'm lactose intolerant i'm lactose intolerant and I still, I still eat it. I just oh, muscle yeah. through. I eat cheese with the full, the toilet. with the full <laughs> knowledge that I'll shit myself an hour and a half what? later. No problem. We're going to talk about let's, you being lactose intolerant, Jim. But like, we'll get. I was going to say yeah. you're going to, yeah, yeah, you're going to. So here's what we're, we're going to do. Gonna blow your mind today. Yeah. You're going to say that the cheese doesn't affect me. Well, hold on. No, I'm going to say it doesn't have lactose. Ooh. Then why does the cheese make me shit? Oh, I no, don't want to know. No, no, no. I, I, have a, I have a theory, Jim, even though I don't know you that well. I, Jim, I have a theory for Jim's you. not allowed but to get any answers Forrest, yet. Forrest, I'm sure, yeah. will like... Because yeah. what happens you know. is, what happens is, I drink like 10 lagers, right? <laughs> and then I have a curry, and then I eat some ice cream afterwards, and I shit myself. <laughs> it's got to be the ice cream. Yeah, it's got <laughs> ice cream. It's the ice cream. Uh, yeah. Okay, so here's what we're going to do, Liz. Jim's going to tell us, I'm going to kind of prod him with some questions, and he's going to tell us everything he thinks he knows about cheese. And then you're going to grade them on a scale of one to 10 for accuracy. And, you know, be harsh. You don't have to be, you know, don't, you know. Yeah, you can't just tell me, talk about cheese. Give me some. Give I'm going to give you some oh, questions. Okay, don't okay. worry. Okay, uh, uh, and then uh, I'm, I'm going to grade you on him on believability. Kelly's going to grade him on confidence. And then we're going to put the scores together. The worst score being zero, the best being 30. And so if you score 26, between 26 and 30, you'll be the big cheese. Between 20 and 25, a cheese head. Between 13 and 19, a cheese ball. Between 7 and 12, cheesy. And between 0 and 6, you're dick cheese. So that's not a good one. You don't want to be that one. Schmegma. All right. So um, let's start off. Uh, what is cheese like? What is how's, What is cheese made of? Cheese is made of from cream that has been, uh, like, from the milk of an animal. From uh -huh. the milk of an animal that's been churned and churned and churned. And then it's put in barrels and it's aged and aged and aged. Until it becomes cheese. <laughs> All right. feel like you're missing some things in there. Um, when do you think the first cheese was made? Oh, the first cheese was made. It would have been during uh, the Black Plague when people didn't wash their genitals. Uh, but the first official cheese, I think cheese, oh, our cheese would be thousands and thousands and thousands of years. I, I, I'm going to say that cheese is uh, 10,000 B.C. Okay. 
Any idea like where it was like originally? The first cheese would have been in Israel, where the birth of the land of the people, and it would have been <laughs> same words. Now. It would have been from a, a, not cow cheese. It would have been the cheese of uh, like a alpaca. Huh. I don't know. Are they in Israel? <laughs> alpaca cheese, your number one first cheese. <laughs> Say that in a bar. No one will prove you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, um, uh, okay, so I, this is something that we'll go over, Liz, because I, I just I looked up stuff, and Liz knows more than I do. But um, there's different types of cheese. So how many different animals can you name besides a cow that cheese comes from? Okay, the do, milk, I, do I need to name the cheese as well? No, no, just name the animals right now. Goats produce goat cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Okay. Uh, feta, I believe... Is the cheese from a sheep? We're not going to say you're, you're right or wrong. I don't know why you're doing this thing. Havati, uh, that the one that you can grill. You don't have to say where it's with cheese, but that's fine. If you that know. is also the cheese of a sheep. No, I want. I, just, just tell me the different animals. Just tell me the animals. Say right now, okay, confidence so, is already so we 150. Have, we yeah. have we have sheep cheese. We have goat's cheese. We have cow's cheese. Yep. Ah, uh, what other cheese? You can make cheese from breast milk, but it's not a popular cheese. <laughs> um, you anything that any animal that can be milked. So you, you'd have goat. Yeah, you said goat like five times now. <laughs> you'd also have <laughs> alpaca cheese. Uh -huh. You would have llama cheese. Mm. Uh, that that cheese is called llama dama ding dong. <laughs> Um, uh, love that joke. Yeah, <laughs> you would have uh, I, 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 any animal that can be milked. I know. Okay, so that's it. We got we got alpaca, goat, sheep, and and cow. And you said human, right? You can have human cheese. Yeah, you had it. I've never had it, but I know of it. Okay, I know people have made it. What do you? Where? What is the? Do you, Borat's wife made it. I, I don't think you're nervous, but do you know? <laughs> that's a documentary. <laughs> Do you know the name of the most expensive cheese in the world? What animal does it come from and about how much does it cost? Oh, uh, that would be, it would be from the cheese of a cow. Uh -huh. And it would be. Any idea where it's from or what it's called or what, how much it costs? Any of it would be, you don't know any of it. It would be from uh, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And its value is the same as gold. <laughs> <laughs> gold? Yeah, because gold uh, gold is the is done by weight. It's denser. And so truffles are the same price as gold. And also weed moves the same as gold. The price yes. of weed, and it, it, it's by weight. It's not quite as much and as gold. so but, the cheese uh, is the same price as gold. Okay, we'll find out if you're right. I don't know if you're correct. But I, I do know if you're correct. Um, uh, here, how about this? Um, the top five countries per capita that consume cheese. Oh, you, that consume cheese. Uh, uh, okay, so so Copenhagen, the the Danes eat a shit ton of cheese. They love their dairy in Denmark. Copenhagen, all I was getting was dairy. I shit myself the whole trip, and then I had to ride a bike. <laughs> so I so kept it in. Though, so the, the Danes, I would put the Danes number one cheese nation. Okay, uh, per capita, and, and uh, then I would say America would be very high up there. Um, I would, They're in the top five, America? Yeah, America would be in the top okay. five. I would say uh, the Swiss would be up there. Uh, I, I would put Australia as a great cheese nation. <laughs> Great cheese, no, fantastic cheeses out of Good Australia. Like Trump right now. <laughs> <laughs> you really do. Fantastic. My favorite cheese growing up was actually called Coon Cheese, which sounds a lot worse than. Yeah. It's not a good name. Lovely cheese. Okay. Um, so that's so that we, was that we was, got, was we got, generic. And Bega. Get some Bega if you're in Australia. We got Denmark. Lovely, tasty cheese. Tasty's the type of cheese. Denmark, America, Switzerland, Australia, and who's the fifth? Ah, uh, go throw in Poland. Poland. All right. Um, all right, and then who would who uses what countries do you think use the least amount of cheese? Oh, uh, Asian cultures don't eat as much cheese. Okay, and that why, may why, be, why is that? That may be because a lot of them are lactose intolerant. The problem with this show is I could come off as racist <laughs> no. because I'm just throwing things out there. Well, right? but we're going to correct you if you're wrong. So Asian, you're Asians are very lactose intolerant. They're not a, they're, the Asians can't do desserts to save their fucking life. <laughs> and I'm a big fan of the Japanese cooking. I'm a big fan of the Chinese and the Thai, but the, yeah, a mochi doesn't fucking no. cut it, Asia. No. 
you got to do better with the desserts. You don't know what the fuck you're doing <laughs> when it comes to desserts, right? And so but you I, love the food. I love the food. The rest of the food, number one with the food. <laughs> the Asians are number one. They beat all the other. No- oh, take out Poland, throw in Italy. Italy? Throw okay. in Italy. I yeah. forgot about pizza and pasta and all that type of stuff. <laughs> okay. Take okay. out Poland, throw in Italy. Okay. All right. One more question. Now, hang on, hang on. I'm You're not done. Fired up. Uh, I'm <laughs> gonna say I'm gonna say the number one country in Asia that, that doesn't like the cheese, I'm gonna go for the Japanese. But then the Japanese love Western culture, so I think now they're getting more because fast, around to fast food really got into their culture about uh, 15 years ago or whatever and now they're really into the fast food and I feel like maybe communist China isn't letting the cheeses in right so I'm going to say China historically Japan but now China has taken over in the anti-cheese race mm, okay <clears throat> um, two more questions and then we'll get <clears throat> excuse me I fucking know all this shit yeah yeah you're, na- you're nailing it you got everything um, uh, what is the difference between cheese and yogurt? They're like almost the same, but they're different. Uh, what's the old joke? Uh, what's the difference between an Australian and yogurt? Yogurt has culture. So cheese doesn't have that's any what culture? The, that's what the British say. Uh, um, no, I think there's culture in cheese. I don't know. Maybe there isn't culture in cheese. I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to say they take the culture out. <laughs> The culture, they take the culture out. They take the culture okay. out. They uh, take the culture out. It becomes Cincinnati. I've truly never uh, seen you more confident in my yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. Confidence and believability. you got to have a passion. A believability, I don't know. A confidence this is, is going to be a good choice for a topic. Okay, and then one more, couple, one more question and we'll get to it. Um, th- this is like a three-part. What do you call someone that sells cheese? Ah... Uh. Uh, it sells cheese. Sandal Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, uh, well, my guy is called Chris. <laughs> okay. You got a cheese Chris. dealer? Yeah, I have a, I have, I have a guy. He has, he's you text a, him, you're like, hey, can, can I get a I love $100 those, I love cheese? those big cheeses when you go into those stores. You know what I have an experience that I really want to experience? You, and I see it, it's, it's food porn. When they make the cabanara inside the big block of cheese yeah. and they swirl it around and it gets the sauce and that type of stuff, they cook, yeah. they put the hot pasta in there, they stir it around. Oh, the COVID will fucking ruin that. We won't be able to do that. I was I was looking, there was a place in Beverly Hills that fucking does that, and I've been looking at it, going, "Oh, one day I'll have, I'll have a meal that's made in a block of cheese." <laughs> Never fucking happened. I'll tell you this: American cheese. The reason that American cheese is American cheese is because it still holds its property and consistency when melted. Most cheeses, when they melt, they slime, and that's why you can put it on cheeseburgers, and it won't slime into your grill, and it will sit there and cook and still hold its form. That is the point of American cheese. Yeah, okay. The cheeseburger. Uh, one more question. An expert in aging cheese is called, like, an expert in... An expert in aging cheese. Ah, uh, fucking, I don't know. Uh, okay. Bill Murray does it for a hobby. Okay. All right, well, that's it. Uh, so, Liz, we're going to start going over. So what Before you, what, we grade him, let's what? take a break. Hi, everyone. I have a stiffy right now. <laughs> Do you want to know why, Forrest? Um, no. Because this episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Oh, Stiffies, yeah. want them, get them, have them, have fun. That's not their real slogan. That's what I made up for them because I'm so happy with this product. Guys, let's talk about sex, babies, and babies. Good sex. Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up! Bluechew.com. That's blue, like blue the colour, and chew, like chew. (laughs) Bluechew brings you the first chewable pill with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. Isn't it weird that there's so many things in these ad reads that I can't pronounce. And those two words just roll off my tongue. (laughs) A lot of practice. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. And since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a pill. So you can be ready whenever the opportunity arises. And that's why I have the erection right now. Woo woo, Forrest. Woo woo. (laughs) Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians. They're doctors to me and you. So you don't have to go to your doctor's office or wait in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your tour in a discreet package. Dun, 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 dun. They're made in the USA. And since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they are cheaper than a pharmacy. And best of all, no more awkwardness. I hate awkwardness. Jack, ask me things that I hate. What do you hate? Awkwardness. That's fucking it. <laughs> right now. 
You've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit bluechew.com and get your first order free when you use the special promo code GYM. Just pay $5 shipping. Could have been easy. Five bucks, you got stiffies coming to your door. Again, that's B L U E Chew.com. Promo code Jim. Try it for free. Blue Chew. It's better, cheaper, faster choice. And we thank them for sponsoring this podcast. All right. And we are back. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, Liz, please grade Jim on his accuracy of his knowledge of cheese from one to 10. I wish I got to grade him on his confidence. I'm going to give him a five out of 10 on accuracy. Boom, yeah. shakalaka. Give him what I want. A, 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 a kernel of truth to everything, but just, just a kernel. A kernel, yeah. okay. Okay, just All a right. curd. Just a curd of truth. <laughs> yeah, good one. Um, Okay, so, uh, and then Kelly, uh, confidence? He's so confident that he just said boom shakalaka to getting a 5 out of 10 on accuracy. <laughs> no, not only that. So, confidence is like a 47. Um, 47. No, he's a, right. he's a full 10 on confidence. And I said my new catchphrase that I'm trying to work into the nation's vocabulary, which is, give them what they want! <laughs> That's what I say now when I play golf with Forrest and I get a shot in, I go, give them what they want! Right yeah, there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And like you also say it when you th- get the ball goes in the water. If I'm drunk, <laughs> I, if I'm drunk, I also because I'm a showman. I'm a showman when I play the golf, <laughs> and I, I don't I don't want to get it too close to the pin. I put it in the bunker uh, so then the next shot will look even more fantastic. Give them what they want, people. That's what Give them what they want. That's what you told me last night. You said he he, he has the most endorsements of of our golfers because, and I said he's hitting it in the water in the grass, and he's like, yeah, he's. he's He's, he's, he's a drinker, though. They like that. And- yeah, my, my golfer gets drunk and just hits the ball in the water, and everyone doesn't understand why he's on the tour. Everyone's like, how is he still on the tour? He plays worse than anyone. But he, he gives them what they want. Okay. He um, gives them what they want. Believability. Uh, mm, uh, your confidence is very high. Do I believe you? No. You said something that it's they take the culture out of cheese, which I don't even know what you it, meant by that. They don't take it out. It's aged out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't believe that when you they said that. It's not like they get a spoon for us. You, you were very, you were very confident, but you were very unsure in that confidence. Yeah. I could hear it in your voice, and you were like coming back and forth, taking things back. So I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a three. A three? Yeah, yeah that's all. Yeah, man. but that's still, that's still an eighteen. Arsh. Still an 18. And this is the only subject we've done on the show that I'm passionate about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's still an eighteen, which makes you a cheese ball. It's not bad. How did I do in Saudi Arabia? You did terrible. Oh, I, I don't I, remember what the categories are. I think you got a seven. <laughs> I think you got like a seven in so, Saudi Arabia, right? So I didn't do well with Saudi Arabia. No, you, you called the, the you, I asked you what one of the holy cities was. And Pajama, said, bed. Pajama, Pajama bed. Pajama bed. Yeah, yeah, that was that. <laughs> that was our previous episode. All right, Liz. So uh, thank you for being here. Can you um, just uh, talk a little bit? I mean, we're going to talk about cheese all the time, but how is cheese yeah. made? And like, is it just cream? Uh, hang and on, like, we, we, how many how many animals? First of all, how many animals? I want to get. The, you yeah. want to go to the animals first? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, you Forest said has the whole list. <laughs> oh no, do the first one. Yeah, do the questions in order. All so right, that have to be in or whatever you want to. But let's just let's talk about how cheese is made first, because you just said I think I, you said it's cream, and then they curd it's it. It's milk. You keep on hitting with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Liz, we don't need you. So yeah. <laughs> you it's not a stick. You have a pumice thing that goes up and down. I like the visual. Like, of like, like, you're, getting like you're masturbating. You're up and down, up and down, up and down. All right. Then you leave butter. it until it churns. Yeah, butter turns into That's cheese. Butter. That's churning butter. Yeah, yeah butter does not. <laughs> butter's okay. not cheese. It, 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 right. it goes like this. It goes milk, cream, butter, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> the major food groups. No, no, no. That's it's all the yeah. same product just well, let, over let, time. Let, let's let let's, let's Liz answer. Is it milk, just cream, the butter? Just evolution to greatness. Yeah. But yeah. How is that? It is milk, cream, so, butter, cheese. So it's 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 milk, not cream, that you start with. Well, and, that's what I meant. Um, you do need the culture is like a key part of it. So you've got to add bacteria of a yeah. very specific kind, and then you also have to add something called rennet, which is what's going to take a liquid and convert it into a solid. So rennet where, is an enzyme, where and you, do you need salt. Where Those do are you, the four things you must have. Where do you get culture? What is culture? Where, where do I do I do I pick that up at the there, shop, or is it just you like, do? There are stores that sell just nothing but different cultures that you make cheese with. Hmm. Canada is a place to get a lot of cultures. And where does culture grow? Is that a plant? Um, <laughs> yeah, well, they're bacteria that are cultivated and then freeze dried. So you add them in like powder. Is Corona so, a culture? 
You want to make a Corona cheese? I, I hope not. <laughs> you can make some cheese out of it. Just like, that, it'd be like a spiky ball of cheese. <laughs> are, you think, are you thinking of making cheese, Jim? No, I'm not thinking. I, I Look, there's so many things in this world. Like, I bought a pasta maker, and then I just found out that you could just buy pasta. <laughs> <laughs> I, I use it a couple of times. I'm like, oh, you can just buy it, and then go, what about fresh pasta? You can buy fucking fresh pasta. <laughs> and it's like, with cheese, I'm like, eh, I'll just Why buy make it. it. Why make it? There's so many people I, uh, who are doing good jobs. Do you ever make cheese, Liz? No, everyone always asks me and I'm like, why in the world would I make cheese? I don't wanna make cheese in my kitchen. I'll like go buy it. There's 300, 500 choices, but yeah, no, so, I don't make cheese. So they put the, they put the, they get the milk. They pour, yes. they pour a cup of culture in. Is the cultures like a powder? They pour yeah, that it's in? it's not a cup, but yeah, you sprinkle in the, the bacteria and you start to basically convert the sugar, the lactose in milk into lactic acid. So it goes from being liquid to being like jello. Uh -huh. And then you add in rennet or an enzyme to coagulate it, make all the proteins stick together. And then you have like curd that's like the texture of a yoga mat. And then you can cut it, stir it, cook it, churn it, hit it, press it. You can manipulate it. And so you don't ways. have you don't have to ch churn it. And no, churning is re churning is really what you do for butter. But I'm trying to you know. Do you hit it with a stick? <laughs> yeah, what's a stick cheese? Um, yeah. So you mentioned rennet and uh, and the, the enzyme, and that leads us to the other thing about how when the first cheeses were made. That one you were pretty close on. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, How'd you oh, give me a three? Uh, no, no, she gave you a five. I gave you a five. Yeah, I gave you a five, but he gave me a three. Yeah, I've, I think all, he didn't I've already. Yeah, he's been a bit harsh. I got hit it with a stick. I got, I got, I got ten thousand BC. You didn't get it hit with a stick, and it was, it was, it was. You're it was, telling me all she just said then that there was no sticks involved. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't call a spoon a stick, a wooden spoon a stick. <laughs> well, unbelievable. That's, yeah, a, good that's a good so, question. So, um, it, it, it gets it, what I read is that it was probably around eight thousand BC. All right, uh, that's, when, that's pretty close. Yeah, yeah, that's when, when sheep were first domesticated, I don't know. Maybe you can talk about well, how it was first discovered. Like it was like kind of a discovery cheese, right? Not like an. Yeah. So rennet is um, traditionally what's used to coagulate milk to make cheese. And it's an enzyme that comes from the stomach lining of an unweaned ruminant. So a baby cow, goat, sheep, water buffalo. And that enzyme is what makes the protein stick together. But back in the day when stomachs were used as canteens, it's very likely at some point milk was put into a dried stomach canteen and you know a couple of hours later it had solidified because that rennet enzyme was was in the stomach lining this so that's a kind of that's that's probably one of the ways that cheese was kind of discovered as a food that people could make this fascinates me all foods fascinate me in the sense that okay cheese we all love it it's all good um it was made from a fucking what you think it was a sheep stomach was the first one that's Probably a, sheep or goats because, yeah, we, you're talking about like migrant tribes of, of migratory nomadic people. So they right. didn't have cows back then. So they I, were domesticating I smaller animals. I understand that foods are invented, but who's the first prick to try it? <laughs> Who is the first person to see that block of something in the bottom of a sheep's stomach? Never seen anything like and, it before and gone, oh, give me put a that in my mouth. Mm, that looks good. <laughs> give me, Dude, it's give a, me, a dare. Give me a spoon. It's a dare. <laughs> like how you dared me to drink all the extra butter from the lobster tray. Uh, but was... you knew what butter was. Yeah. You oh. knew what butter was. Who was the first person? I even think like... The first person who invented chocolate, right? Who invented a block of chocolate and took that to the world fair and went like this, go, here's my invention. And then they go, what is that? Uh, they go, what's that? And you go, it's a food. And then they're like, it doesn't look very appetizing. It's a, it's a solid block of a poo colored, <laughs> of a, of a poo colored substance. It doesn't have any flair or color to it. And then you're just like this, but give it a go. <laughs> give it a go. I'm telling you, it's good. It's very good. Um, so, okay. So, so okay. I and will that, say this about cheese as well. Can anyone, can anyone name me a food, a single food that isn't improved by a partnership with cheese? <laughs> name me one. Try, one. try to make, try to be, because people say lobster, mac and cheese, lobster, mac and I cheese. I got one. Oysters I, kill Patrick with the melted cheese. The seafood rocks out the cheese. So don't come at me with seafood. No, but I've uh, got all the answers. <laughs> I've got one. I got one. I, and I love cheese and I, I agree with you. But what about sushi? Hey, 
cream cheese in a Philly yeah, roll. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you out of your mind. I don't mind. think it makes it better. I like it without the. I mean, no, but no, preserved no, no, no. fish and cheese is pretty bad. Like sardines. Yeah. Sard- sardines anchovies put them on pizza get out of here yeah. <laughs> say, just say you're an expert what are yeah. you talking about <laughs> applesauce sounds bad uh, you're fair, you're right. wh- what do you say Jack applesauce but cheese and apples cheese and apples apple. paired what are you, together cheese and apple <laughs> cheese and apple you can't just go oh because then you get like no, no, every, everything's improved with cheese. Ice cream, mascarpone, cheese and a thing, cheesecake and all that, desserts, cheese it up, put some cheese on your stuff. You can even like shrimp, your shrimp palm, you put your palm anything, mm-hmm. you palm something up <laughs> and it's good. It goes from all right to good. Okay, so animals, um, this is what you guessed. You said goat, sheep, cow, uh, human and alpaca. Those are all correct. Yeah. You said llama too. I didn't find that there was any llama cheese, but I suppose you can make. Liz, llama Liz, tell him he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the milk of a ruminant. So I guess you could make a llama cheese. I, I have never you know, had myself. Never Get what I camel. want. <laughs> we, did, we didn't do camel, and and actually, Forrest, I don't think on your list was um, yak cheese. No, I had I that in Nepal. I didn't have yak cheese. cheese. From, no. Well, the knack is the lady yak. Oh, okay. Yeah. The um, don't water buffalo. <laughs> yep. Water buffalo. Buffalo cheese. I've had that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's good. Uh, I also had reindeer, moose, horse. That yeah. doesn't seem like that. No one wants horse cheese. Yeah. The, the, the <laughs> fucking, too lean. The fucking French would eat that. <laughs> They'd uh, be like, it is uh, the cheese of the horse. <laughs> Uh, um, served in the eye socket of a llama. <laughs> <laughs> it is delicacy. Boo, boo, boo. Uh, camel cheese. Uh, oh, yeah, camel cheese. Yeah, that's good. And uh, <laughs> and then there's donkey cheese, too. Now, what, I would have cheese. said donkey. I bet, I bet you that's what Mary had. After she gave birth and she was in the manger, she would have reached over, yanked a bit of donkey cheese out. <laughs> Well, no, I don't know if I have this correct, though. The most expensive cheese in the world. Is that from a donkey? Is that correct, Liz? And then that- she said, look at all the I, cheeses. You, I, I believe you. I The most expensive cheese I've ever heard about was the Spanish one that you yeah. also had in there. That's yes. a mixed milk cheese. Um, and, and it was cow, the, wasn't it? Your, like the Europeans have all these competitions and then people bid on the cheese at auction and people go nuts and they'll buy it for like a couple thousand euro a pound. Yeah. So... Not yeah, as much I as gold. But but the same price as gold. What, a thousand, a couple thousand a pound for gold? Not good gold. <laughs> when, when the market for gold is really good. What's that, two carats? <laughs> <laughs> two carat gold? Just a, just a rock with a little glimmer in the <laughs> Can't give me two A gold. rock with hope. <laughs> um, yeah, I found something. I think it's called, it's P-U-L-E, Pool or Pule. It's made exclusively at Serbia's Zazavica uh, Special Natural Reserve. And they use, make it from donkeys. And then the one that you just mentioned too, yeah, it's it made Cabrales. In, Cabrales the, yeah. in Spain. And that one, it was like some some crazy, they, they used to, like you're saying they bid on it, right? And it gets up to yeah, like- Yeah, they, they put it up at auction, but like that one is ripened in a cave, in a natural cave, like an actual stone in the ground cave where the mold is just ambient in the air. And that's how the cheese becomes a blue cheese. And how does it an goes- auction sound in Spanish? That'd be weird. <laughs> ole, 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 That's all it is. Ole, 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 four pesos. So, uh, so. I don't know that anything. We were in Spain, not Mexico. <laughs> yeah, there, was, there was a bitter phone bitter. <laughs> there, there was, there, I wrote some stuff at the end, by the way, because you mentioned the cave and ambient, whatever. There was like some myth that that's how blue cheese was discovered, and I, it was like really. Yeah. F- I tell you the best cheese I ever had. Best cheese I ever had. Like Roquefort. Uh, like in- it, it was in a it was in a wet market in China. Bat cheese. <laughs> <laughs> give, it, give it a go. If you haven't had it, give it a go. Give it a go. My girlfriend died the next day. <laughs> Here, here's here's what they said according to ancient cheese legend, which is already funny. <laughs> 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 Uh, blue cheese was invented when a young boy was eating a sandwich near a cave, spotted a hot babe, and ab- <laughs> abandoned his lunch to pursue her. When he returned a few days later, the sandwich was covered with mold, but he still ate it. And well, the rest is blue cheese history. That's what I. That wow. doesn't seem accurate. I don't know. I feel like that leaves out a lot of key steps, but yeah. 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 Did, did he get the girl? <laughs> yeah, it's two days did later. He, did he get the girl or, or, or did he come back to, like after a long walk going, I have to eat something. I've been chasing that woman through the forest. <laughs> um. And then uh, I want to get into like the types of cheeses because you, you, you gave us some information, Liz, but I'm going to go through a couple of these things that Jim answered real quick first. Uh, 
Top cheese consumer. I don't know how you got this right, but Denmark yeah. is the ter- top. top. Get what I want. That really, <laughs> that really earned you the five. Was the yeah. Denmark? That was pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah, Denmark. I was there. I was. I was in a fancy uh, Michelin star restaurant, and every course was like, "Okay, for your starter, cheese, and then for your second course, we're going to have this cheese sauce on top of cheese. a bit of cream, and then we're going to have some more dairy, and then like you know, it was like a fucking yo play or something at the end. <laughs> Just a yo play. A, a, a shitty yogurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, and it was pretty fucking good meal but my girlfriend doesn't care that much for dairy so she was just like oh this meal sucks and I was like this is the best meal I've ever had <laughs> yeah, I love that um, so Denmark is number one you were wrong on all the rest of them uh, no America no Swiss no That's Australia it. no They're Poland no it. Italy um, number how did Italy not get it yeah, now I, I, there's I, one there's one obvious one the, the rest are Iceland is in there Finland Mm. France, you missed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have the fromage. And then this is an a, obvious mess. There, this yeah. is a little bit of cheese and that then you can eat. <laughs> Cyprus, uh, and it might change from time, but that was a, the one that I, I guess was from 2017. And this is per capita. And then uh, uh, United States is at 16th. That was like kind of wow. surprising to me. I felt we like we eat a ton. Together. Of- no, that's because the cheese you eat doesn't actually qualify as cheese. <laughs> yeah. It's not even edible. It's yeah, not real maybe. food. I, I'm a big fan. I'll tell you what. I have a, a few guilty pleasures in this world. And one of my guilty pleasures is I love Taco Bell. Fucking love mm-hmm. it. And I just eat it by myself in a car. I don't go there with anyone normally because they frown upon it. They yeah. look at you like, where have you taken me? And I go, it's a good first date. Shut your mouth. <laughs> anyway, but I, I love the Taco Bell. And there's a lot of cheese in that that's not cheese. Mm-hmm. I have yeah. a, I have a fondness for fa- I like high-end cheese. I love an ex- a ch- cheese platter or when they bring a cheese card out to you in a fancy restaurant. Providence here in LA, which is a fancy business, it was the best cheese I've ever eaten. They have a cheese course with a cart. Very mm-hmm. good. Um, but I love, I love me a craft single. One of those ones that are just wrapped in plastic. Yeah. It melts in just such a way. It's just the gooey goodness. And I know it's not good. <laughs> I know it's shitty, shitty. Is that the- even cheeseless? Is that like a craft it's, single? Well, it's pro- no, it's processed cheese. So it's not technically cheese. That's why it says pasteurized processed cheese food on the label. Cause they can't actually just. Do you, do you ever have yourself a craft single? Totally. It's the best on a cheeseburger. It's like yeah. Really gooey. It's like what you want on a burger. It's the best yeah. one. It's the best one on a burger. Yeah. And people, yeah, totally. people, people, if they see you putting it on the burger, they go, ooh, ooh, like that. And then they have it and you go, what do you think? Come on. That's yeah. good. Come on. Now yeah. try the chocolate. <laughs> well, wait, how is that? How is, how is a Kraft single made versus normal cheese? Hit it with a stick. They, there's like a lot of... Less, less stabilizers <laughs> and preservatives that are added to it and it's heated to kind of make all of these things like meld together so that whole process i was talking about where you add bacteria to acidify the milk and then you add rennet like yeah you don't do any of that you like basically mm. like cook a bunch of shit together and like pack it into a block and it lives forever i love it's, that people think that like that's cooking. gross like craft singles are gross but we get other cheese from the fucking li- stomach lining of animals. Right, right, right. Yeah, but I tell you, uh, gross uh, is all relative. Yeah. If, if I put like two of them on, a, on a, mm-hmm. each patty and then I put two patties and I have a four craft single burger <laughs> and then there's just all these plastic wrappers all around me <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just sitting in my own filth. Littering the floor. Yeah, I'm fantastic. Uh, I love them. Uh, How do they wrap them in that plastic? There's a machine. It's a mystery. That's whoever, our next episode. Whoever made that machine really fucking nailed it, eh? <laughs> Who individually wraps craft cheese. That, that, that factory line must be awesome. <laughs> must visit it one day. Okay, so you, you were correct. Uh, Asia uses the, it's Asia in general that uses the least amount of cheese. Yeah, boom. Um, How na- did he na- give me a three? Uh, Come na- on. No, five. five. You got a five in accuracy. No, but for believability. No, because you're all over the place. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. um, but yeah, there, the one thing that I read in, uh, in Chinese culture, they said cheese consumption was historically limited to nomadic tribes living on the fringes of society who are generally viewed as outsiders or barbarians. So back in the day, eating cheese was associated with like an unsavory lifestyle. So it was like a classism, elitism kind of thing. And that just kind of continued till in the food, I, I guess. So, but now it's become, there is actually, you know, they've become more westernized. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Hey, world. <laughs> People are trying to adapt to an ever-changing world, constantly changing. Where are we going to buy more stuff online than ever before? That's, that's what we're doing. What if you're in... No, we're all going to buy more. We're stuff. all we're all doing it. Yeah, yeah we're yeah, all yeah. doing it. <laughs> we're all buying so much stuff online. And if you're an e-commerce seller, 
Are you ready to meet the demands of this new delivery culture? Probably not. But you would be ready with ship station. Mm. Why ship station, you asked? That was a good question, Forrest. Thank Why you. ship station? When you're selling online, getting a lot of orders out fast, it can be tough. It can be very tough. How do you keep track of who gets what? Which shipping carrier should you use? Are you getting the best rates? That's why you need ShipStation. Look, uh, I, don't, I don't put my name to a product I don't believe in. And I believe in ShipStation. It's the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. Just a few clicks and you'll be managing your orders, printing out labels, and getting products to happy customers. ShipStation, <laughs> it makes it that easy. ShipStation helps online sellers of any size get orders out quickly, save money on shipping costs, and keep those customers happy. No matter what you're selling or where you're selling, where you're selling is important. You might be selling on Amazon. You heard of it? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, Etsy or your own website. ShipStation brings all your orders into one simple interface. Forrest, Forrest, Forrest. You first. were going to ask me how my Etsy shop's going is what I think. Forrest, Forrest, how is your Etsy shop going? It's going great. I sell rocks on Etsy and um, big demand for them now during the quarantine. And you, they go out quick with ShipStation and you can do it from your cell phone. He sells rocks, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> ShipStation works with all <laughs> major carriers. Etsy including Art Rocks. Including USPS, FedEx, UPS, even Amazon Fulfillment. They offer big discounts on shipping costs. Now any business can access the same postage discounts that are usually reserved for those large Fortune 500 <laughs> companies. You'll always know what... You'll always be getting the best deal with fucking ship stuff. All oh, right. <laughs> so no right. wonder so ship right. station is number one. <laughs> number one choice for online sellers. You'll ship more in less time with the best available rates. And right now, I don't know about that, listeners, can try ShipStation free for 60 days when you use the offer code JIM. Make sure your business is ready to meet the demands of delivery culture. Get started at ShipStation.com today. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in JIM. How easy can it be? There's a microphone. It's at the top of the page. You put in JIM. Put it in. <laughs> That's shipstation.com. Then it. enter the offer, Jim. Shipstation.com. Make shit happen. Ship happen. <laughs> Whether you're working from home or working on your fitness, you want what you're listening to to be what you're listening to. Not that everyone around you is listening to. Everyone needs a great pair of earless earbuds. Wireless earbuds. You don't want the earless ones. They're no good. You want the wireless earbuds. But before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you need to check out wireless earbuds from Raycon. Raycon earbuds start at half the price of, of other premium wireless earbuds on the market. And they sound just as amazing as the top audio brands that you already know. Their newest model, the Everyday E25, I've been sporting them at the gym. When I say gym, I'm talking about myself. <laughs> the Everyday E25 earbuds are the best ones yet with six hours of playtime. They do have very long playtime. Seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass and more compact design that gives you that nice noise isolating fit. Raycon's wireless earbuds are also so comfortable Perfect for conference calls or binging podcasts. Do, do you use them first? Yeah, I use I use earbuds all the time because we're traveling. And that, um, these ones are great. They, they fit in your ears really well, and you don't even know they're there, and they sound great. And, yeah. What songs have you enjoyed with your earbuds? Uh, well, you know, I like Pink Floyd. I have a Pink Floyd shirt on. I, uh, I like uh, other music. Pink Floyd. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. I remember his cover of Wonderwall. <laughs> Unlike some of your other wireless options, Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet and no dangling wires. Oh, God. Those people are so 2015, aren't they? <laughs> dangling wires off their heads like fucking idiots. No dangling wires to distract you. When you got the dangling wires, you try to look at your phone, all you're seeing is a movie with a couple of wires hanging down. No good. No good. The company was, was co-founded by Ray J, 
You know, Ray J. All right, good on you, fella. Good on you, mate. Good on you, mate. Big fan, big fan. And celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Cardi B and even Melissa Etheridge are obsessed with Raycons. Pick up a pair and see what all the hype's about. Call to action. Now the time. <laughs> You're not supposed to read that, buddy. Yeah, you want to do it. No, no one says call to action. <laughs> Now's the time to, yeah, to get the latest <laughs> and greatest from Raycon. Get 15%. That's crazy. That must be a typo. Let me read it again. No, it's true. <laughs> get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash I don't know. That's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash I don't know for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. Buyraycon.com. Slash, I don't know. Uh, when we left you, we were talking about the Chinese people. And cheese. And, and what they, China, as Trump says, China. 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 Um, I heard, because I, I went to school with a lot of Asian people. There's a lot of Asian people in Sydney. And my school was 80% Asian or 70% Asian. And I heard that they believe, now, I, I don't, I'm not, I, this isn't a, a for sure thing, Right. But I heard that they believe that we smell like milk. That white people have like a, a because of all our dairy, that we have a bit of a, a, a milky smell to us. Yeah, well, considering all the racist things we, that our country has said about Asians, I feel like that's the oh, war, that's a, like the least. Of, no, I'm, I'm just a, saying, I'm all right with it. Yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying, we'll take it. That one. Yeah. <laughs> Figure they come back. That's not intended yeah. in the uh, charming newborn <laughs> baby way. Yeah. But, but, but I, I'll tell you something else about my school. I've got to give a shout out to my school, St. Ives High in Sydney. Uh, in the in the Sydney Telegraph yesterday, uh, the story came out that the buildings are riddled with asbestos. <laughs> awesome. They're, they've got a $4 million cleanup right now. So to all the Ooh. people at St. Ives High, uh, uh, let's all get a uh, lawsuit together and uh, make a bit of cash. <laughs> That's true. My high school was filled with asbestos. Okay. I, I don't know. If, I don't know if you can see it in the shot now, but we have a plate of cheese in front of you too. So that we're we have get... we have gherkins here, the little tiny gherkins. I, I, this well, is... there's cheese, but there's also I we I picked up the cheese. <laughs> the cheese, the, I'm, I'm gonna, the I'm gonna, cheese I'm... was ordered by our our, our producer Alex, and the, I believe Liz, you gave us the cheeses to order, right? The is, then you uh, suggested us. Which... I gave some recommendations. Yeah, yeah. Some, some recommendations. I well, I don't the... know. I don't know what you wound up with. No, I think, no, I no think. we got some father beans there. Fa no, 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 no those, those are, are almonds. Yeah, almonds. those are Marconi. They're okay, really so good. I've, I've, never, I've never understood one. this. Really and then there's fig jam. How it got involved with cheese. Oh, my God. How no, it, jam, jam's so good with cheese. I like it, but how did it jump on the cheese bandwagon? Another one, grapes. Who invited you? Who invited grapes? I still eat them. And then walnuts are like this. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging out with grape. <laughs> Every and charcuterie cheese. board is just high people figuring out the, all the food in their apartment. Yeah, and just... uh, how those combos were invented <laughs> yeah. is is beyond me. But the little gherkins—I've never seen the little gherkins with. I, I hate. I hate anything from the cucumber to pickle family. I'm not a fan. Cucumber, I can eat the most, but as soon as it's pickled, mm. oh! In Australia, we didn't have uh, pickles. We didn't have pickles. Now, there's going to be Australians singing at home going, fuck you, you cunt. We fucking do have pickles. You don't fucking know what you're fucking talking about. Well, I'm older than you, you cunt. All right? I'm fucking older than you. So I had a different experience. Right? Because to the Australians out there, but it feels like it's second nature. You know, there's McDonald's in every corner. But McDonald's came to Australia when I was about uh, three or four. Right? When I was a little kid. And you used to, we, it, it was like a big event. Yeah. My parents used to go there. There was one in our town and that looked like a train carriage. And we used to go out there, like all little train booths, right, with little overhead racks up. And, and my job was to get the straws and the napkins. <laughs> and then me and my dad, we picked a table and you got to hold your table because there was so many people. It was like when there was that first McDonald's in Moscow and they used to fucking queue around the block. That, that's how McDonald's <laughs> in Australia used to be 40 years ago. Anyway, so it came over 40 years ago to Australia. Before that, we had never experienced pickles. Pickles, there was probably some specialty store for the one Jewish person that lived in town, but we didn't have them on the regular. And so, and back then, you couldn't order your Big Mac how you wanted it. They used to just cook six of them at a time, leave them under a heater, <laughs> and then you just luck of the draw, right? So what would happen is you'd have the two pickles. There's two pickles on a Big Mac, one pickle on a cheeseburger, one pickle on a hamburger. Two pickles on, on a, on a uh, quarter pounder, right? I used to work at McDonald's, right? Anyway, you'd see everyone would lift up their the, – the, the pickles are always on the top level of your Big Mac. You lift up, you lift your meat up, you throw your two bits of pickles into your styrofoam tray. Used to be in styrofoam. It was a fucking mental world we lived in. Anyway <laughs> – 
Anyway, so McDonald's in Australia for a couple of years had a policy where they wouldn't serve pickles in inner city McDonald's after 9.30 p.m. because all the drunks threw them against the window. And you, the, 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 the front window pickle, of all pickle racing. The front window of all McDonald's were just covered in pickles every fucking way. So, so McDonald's in Australia went, no more bloody pickles. None of you fuckers eat them anyway. We're not putting them on. We're saving that pickle money, that sweet, sweet pickle money. Anyway, I like so, that there was a meeting about pickles and McDonald's yeah. and work. Um, I'll tell you when I first worked at McDonald's. We get off track here a bit, Liz, and you can join in the conversation if you wish. If you have something to add to it right now, but I was. I worked, I worked at McDonald's. I was there when they first brought in the McRib. You, you can't remember a time before the McRib. <laughs> the McRib was brought in when I was 14 years old. We've been rocking the McRib in this world for 29 years and it comes out every bloody year. And there used to be a promotional burger every month and then we got the McRib and we thought it was madness. It was the first time we used long onions and not the little dried toenail clippings that you had to add water to. And we had a vat of, of barbecue sauce and tongs. First time I had fucking tongs. And you had to dip the bloody whole thing in there. And we didn't eat ribs much in Australia back then. So we were like, where did the bones go? The mystery was endless. So we have some cheese here. And uh, we're going to talk about cheese now. Um, back to cheese. Thanks for that. Two slices on a quarter pounder. <laughs> one slice on a Big Mac. You don't have the McFeast anymore, but the McFeast. Did you ever have the McFeast? What the hell was the McFeast? McFeast? Ah, let me tell you. No, now, the McFeast no, no, is no, a quarter no, no. pounder bit of meat with a bit of tomato. We got to get to the lettuce cheese tasting. And lettuce and tomato and cheese. We got to get to the cheese tasting. Well, this is we'll a do a McDonald's recipe. Yeah, yeah, episode. yeah. yeah. Oh, very. Excited. I know everything about McDonald's. Liz, <laughs> I, I think Kelly just emailed you the list of cheeses we have yeah. there. Okay. I don't know if you right. if you got that or not, but. Oh um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just so you know that you. Well, if I if I really am an expert, I should be able to figure it out. Oh just, wow. Just by okay. looking at him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Come on, expert. Right. Yeah. Prepared to have the list. <laughs> um, I I had put types of cheeses because I don't know what I'm talking about on on our on our on our sheet for research, and then when we sent it to you, you said that you. you quote unquote we can get into this because there's categories are a little bit weird can you talk about like categories of cheese a can little I bit have some before? crackers please yeah and then and then we'll get into the taste yeah i mean like categorizing cheese is really complicated because there's so many and so when i wrote my last book i basically invented new categories for cheese so i have nine hey, cheeses that excuse, I, excuse I me, Liz. Oh, excuse me Liz. jack can you get that closer to the mic so it's fucking louder are you opening the crackers <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ yeah, Jesus. No, I didn't mean get a clip. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, yeah. Jack. Uh, okay, You're wait. like a bad person wait for the Jack movie that's yeah, opening up crisps. Yeah. Okay, so I'm sorry. You, you were saying this. The <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so I picked nine cheeses, and I call them the gateway cheeses. Oh, yeah. And the idea is like, they're like the gateway drug to that style of cheese. So oh, everyone's, heard, everyone's heard of them. Oh, and gross. if you know brie, you know it's like white and soft and creamy. Or you know cheddar and that means something. Or you know blue. And yeah. then from there, you can go into all the other cheeses that are kind of like that gateway cheese. The so, um, oh, so it's that, that cheese is the gateway to the other cheeses. Got the, it. The irony yeah. is also most girls that I know that are called brie are also white and creamy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start. Uh, Extra buttery. You never Creamy. meet like a Latin brie. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a white chick name it's all day. It's a white day. girl name yeah. for sure. <laughs> so we're going to start eating some cheese. Are you right, Jim? And, and Kelly and Jack have some cheese over there too. And we got this cheese uh, from right. your house. You, you, po you point at one for me to. So they're all, they're all numbered. This is in my house. Yeah, no, you can turn around. Yeah, this is in uh, Sherman Oaks. This is really close to your house. Yeah, it, uh, it's, I think the name of the place is on there. All right. This is your so, good local cheesemonger. This is the cheesemongers. Cheesemonger, that's the bloody. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's like, you, you didn't get that one. I sort of thought with all your time in England, come on, that's like a Britishism. Yeah, you get longer. bloody fucking cheese. Um, okay, so our, the first cheese there, label number one. I don't know. Do you want to? Can you see it? Do you want Jim to hold it up so you can, can see I it? Or you have the leave the list now too, but. Um, you can eat it with a cracker or I not can, cracker. I, I can tell you. I can tell you all day what this one is. Okay, so oh, you want me to give you multiple choice that one, or you know? No, what the, don't eat it for this one. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah. What is it? It's, it's the are you starting with number one, or are you yeah, just number, number, one, number, one, number one? Number one. Number one. Number one. Mozzarella. <laughs> Yeah, but it's not just any mozzarella. I thought if we were going to do mozzarella, we should make it count. So it's a buffalo mozzarella. Mm. So here's the thing: water I buffalo mozzarella mm. is like the classic. 
mozzarella di bufala made in southern yeah. Italy, and it's got twice <laughs> as much fat as cow milk. So oh, make right. it cow. I didn't know that it's that got- it was actually from Buffalo. I had always heard yeah. of Buffalo mozzarella. Did you know it's from Buffalo, Jim, or did you just think? Do you want to get into that? I'll it? get in a little bit later, man. I, I, I don't want to touch my computer. We'll go. We'll all go. Now we got more cheese over there. We got plenty. Number over there. one mozzarella. Get the okay. fuck out of Number, here. Okay. Number. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. All right. Number two um, uh, is the, white know. and creamy. Give me brie. Give me brie. Right. It's your white. It's your white cream girl. So, but it's, it's not the, actually brie. Um, it's so, uh, camembert then. It's not. Mm. It's actually well, made by a tiny farm in upstate New York. It's called Kunick. But um, like all brie styles, it's got that white, soft, edible rind. So that's kind of what makes a brie type. That's what makes it a brie style. Is that white rind? It's actually made of molds. Oh, that's, I was going to ask, that's mold? Yeah, the cheesemaker actually adds molds to the milk and grows the rind on the outside of the cheese. It's like white fur when it starts to grow and it takes a couple of weeks and then you get that soft skin on the outside of the cheese. So you can eat the whole thing and that one actually has cream added to it. So it's 75% butter fat for you. That's a lovely cheese, that Mm -hmm. lovely cheese. I'll give you all the names, Jim, so you can get them like another time. So that's um, yeah. Okay, a number bit of the mozzarella to do, as dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Jim is lactose intolerant. Okay, we'll get that. Uh, number three is um, this is a cheese made yeah, from cow. I, I know what this is. All right, you okay, do. Okay, wait. I, so we we had some notes back and forth about Jim, how there are some. Jim, some I'm, che- I'm, I'm getting some a note. I'm getting. I'm sorry. One second. I'm getting a note. Can you please hold the cheese up before you eat it for the camera? <laughs> Oh, fuck. It's, He's just shoving okay. it into his face. <laughs> it's fun to watch you shove it all in. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, Liz. So this cheese is... Uh, no, is, no, there are some cheeses that really smell like ass, and this is one of them. Oh, smell it. Give, so, give it a good smell, Jim. You got to smell the cheeses. Yeah, you should smell them before you taste them. Hey, girls, but just so you know, I'm not afraid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Any cheese that's got that like tacky, sticky orange rind, which that one did, although I couldn't see it because it went yeah, down it does, it does. Jim's throat so quickly. You can, you, can hold, you can hold it up there, Jim. That's, uh, that's right. the style of cheese. It's washed in salt oh, water. You're so good it, at presentation. It, it grows a different kind of edible rind, but it's more uh, bacteria, uh, not mold. And it makes it orange and it makes it smell really bad. So these are like the farty kind of diapery smelling cheeses, but good to know that is actually like, Why surface. would you describe it as diapery? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, that's, uh, that's a camembert. <laughs> uh, he well, knows three. You know give, give, give me some options. Is, uh, give me some options. Sorry. Well, it's, I don't know what kind of cheese it is. I just have the names here. It's, it's called oh, Red Hawk. Oh yeah, sorry. It's a, it's a local to you guys cheese. It's made in Northern California. It's called Red Hawk and it's made by Cowgirl Creamery. But like Telegio is probably the most famous Telegio or Limburger are like the most famous. So it's like that. Assy cheeses, which is technically called a washed rind. All right. Washed Ash rind. cheese. This next Ash cheese. cheese. Number four Number now. Four. If you're looking at this, look at that. So that's Danish cheese all day. <laughs> Am I right? You actually. Well, no. I don't know. Yeah, that's a bit. No, of, it's that one's sort of ball. like a Havarti. That's like a classic semi cheese, but. You have a lot of random, weird American cheeses on your plate. That one is called Appalachian, and it's made in Virginia. But is it like a Danish one? It's like a Havarti. Yeah, exactly. Like a Danish Havarti. That What's... sort of airy, pillowy, buttery, kind of mild. But wait, you can tell they're American just by seeing or uh, looking at them on the plate? Or, or, yeah, she or, oh, because I gave you the list. Too. I, I gave you the list. Too. I I was like, the list. Yeah. Oh, you're good. Because I, I picked them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, I was like, she's good. <laughs> she's an expert. <laughs> 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 Let me tell you. <laughs> you get a ten. Um, all, all right. right. So, so num- I'm, number I'm, five. I'm, now I'm I've heard. I've heard of this kind. Like number five. This is from. This is a sheep milk oh, one. Yes. Hold it up this for the camera, like, Jim. The- this is one of my gateway cheeses. This mm. is the cheese that most Americans. This is one of the only sheep milk cheeses that most Americans have heard of, and it's called Manchego, and everyone wants to hang call on, it Manchego. I'll guess it in a second. <laughs> But it's Manchego. Mandingo. And it's Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> she already said it. It's Manchego. That's what it's called. Mandingo. Like, you know who he is? Like Che Guevara, not like Chang. <laughs> All right. All right. So, did you eat the rind? Because you're not supposed to. <laughs> A little um, too late. <laughs> I, I ate all of it. <laughs> you ate the rind? Yeah. Don't, 
Uh, what 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 should I expect? Don't blame me for hours? your gastrointestinal <laughs> distress after this. Oh my god! Right. Um, no, the rind right. is actually it's not intended to be eaten. It's not going to hurt you, but it is made of wax. So when you get into harder, more aged cheeses, <laughs> I'm going to shit a candle. <laughs> no, it's not. You're, yeah, well, yeah, I was going to say it'll all be like that. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. Number six. Uh, just in general, in general, Jim, hard aged cheeses. You probably don't want to eat the rind because the rind is like been sitting on the outside of the cheese for three or four or six months or 12 months and it's you do what you do i'll do what i do (laughs) (laughs) okay number six this is i this is a type of cheese that's very popular but don't eat this rind it's made out of cloth oh Uh, too late (laughs) no no she's she's Um, that's tasty cheese tasty cheese but that's like a you know what like in australia they call it tasty like the, the type of cheese like tasty yeah yeah this is a very popular, like, t- very popular type of cheese, Jim. Is, is that what they would call Just cheddar? It's cheddar, but it's like a special kind of cheddar called a cloth-bound cheddar. That one's also made in California. Oh, it really does Cicilline. have cloth. I thought you were kidding. <laughs> no. So it is, it's called a, it's an English thing. It's a bandage wrap cheddar. And so they wrap it in cloth and age it for like nine to 12 months wrapped in cloth. So you want to take the cloth off before you. I think we it. did take the cloth off. Didn't we? Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we took it. We'll find out later. I ate something. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, number... The candle will be gift wrapped. I mean, who knows? Number number seven. Hold hold number seven up. Number seven. Okay, okay. so number seven. Oh, this is an amazing cheese. This is this is closer to like like your Danish cheese. This is uh, like uh, Havarti or whatever. What's the name? Am I right? It's It's actually a Swiss cheese. So no holes in this one. Oh, that's but heaven. It, it's amazing. Oh. Um, so mm. those are the che- that are like very firm but pliable and they melt really, really well. And that one is called Hollerhocker. And it's... Um, the rind is very chewy. <laughs> Am I meant to... Yeah, I, told, I, told, I, I told you not to eat the rind she on the hard telling cheese. you not to eat the rind. She's yeah, giving you the know. instructions. <laughs> that's a good one? When, that's like, what? when the cheese is soft and creamy, oh, you eat on. the rind. And when it's firm or hard, don't eat the rind. Okay. Broadly speaking. The Swiss cheese. All right. Um, I'll remember that. That's like a really (laughs) special, really excellent Swiss cheese. So next we have a cheese from France. Number eight. Hold that one up for you. Number eight. It's a cheese from France. I thought this was going to be like. Oh, oh, this is a good one. I thought this was going to be like an American cheese. You got to smell them always. This one tastes so good. What does that smell like? Yeah. So what does it smell like? It's pungent. What does it smell like though? I don't know. I don't know what that smell is. I don't know. I don't know It's like the only cheese I can really see because it's bright orange. Yeah. It's, um. It's not dissimilar to a Parmesan, although this mm. is a French cheese. It's a little bit it's sweeter milk. than a Parmesan. Vomity. So kind of, <laughs> kind of like an aged Gouda. Um, yeah. It's called Mimolette. And I picked that one because the way they make this cheese, it has tiny microscopic bugs on the rind of the cheese. <laughs> oh, right there. That, it's a little bug. That, like a prank. Do you, do you see how the, like, look at the rind. It looks like a moon rock. Like it's all like dusty and has like whole cratery kind of holes in it, like mm. pock marks. Yeah. Those are from cheese mites that actually help form the rind of the cheese as it ages. But again, I told you not to eat the rind. That, 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 that rind. cheese, not a winner. His, his enthusiasm <laughs> yeah, right. has dwindled. That was, that was the worst mites. one. That was okay, the worst well, one. number nine's an obvious one. I think you know what number nine is. Blue cheese. But- Blue cheese. <laughs> <laughs> <That's what I'm- laughs> Just ate the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a specific kind, obvious. There's so many different that's kinds a, of blues. Yeah, that's Bailey Hazen Blue. It's made in Vermont. But that's oh. one of the best blue cheeses made in the U.S. That's, a, that's a powerful cheese, that one. You might want to wash Ooh. it down with some uh, some mozzarella yeah, there. Mozzarella. So. We've, got, we've got more yeah. cheese over there, Jim. Get, get a smear want. of fig jam on there and yeah. balance uh, it all out. Um, all right, so... <laughs> So uh, that brings us to our, <laughs> that brings us to our next topic. Jim is lactose intolerant. Should we do an emodium ad right yeah, now? No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> emodium. I tell you what, I'll I'll, ne- <laughs> I'll never take a cent from you. Yeah. And I'll advertise you for free. <laughs> yeah, bloody, yeah, bloody, do a good job, emodium. But you, you need you, a lifetime supply. I'll tell you who else will do adverts for. Forrest, you were mentioning the other day. Whoever put those legs on golf bags. Oh yeah, we'll, those are amazing. We'll you do an advert down? for them. <laughs> Whoever put wheels on suitcases. You, I love you forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned that you guys were sort of talking about lactose intolerant at the beginning. So Jim is lactose yes. intolerant. He believes he is, and, and he can't eat I cheese. Lactose said I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he may be, but there's no lactose in cheese. So, so that's not eat, your problem. I, the, but you did mention ice cream. Ice cream has lactose and yeah, milk I, has lactose. Ice cream really lets me go. But if I eat mac and cheese, I'm, I'm done for the day. So how does that work? I mean, probably I'm guessing you're eating it from a box, right? 
I put a scoop of ice cream on top like a normal person. <laughs> so a you... lot of the like the powder stuff has whey powder in it, so that would have lactose. Well, there's, no, there's, there's, that, well, there's, not, there's normally a bit of cream in mac and cheese in the sauce, and the cream would have yeah, lactose, that right? Could be, yeah, that can be it too. Yeah, if you add the cream in there when you mix milk, it in. Milk yeah. powder. Yeah, has that's, that is funny it. because sometimes I eat like a cheeseburger, and then I'm like this. Eh. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, I got away with it. I got yeah. away with it. And other days I eat a cheeseburger and I don't get away with it. I'm sitting there drinking my milkshake thinking, what happened there? <laughs> well, don't, don't drink the milkshake. You need to make a Swiss cheese milkshake. That's, it. that's how you do it. Cheese milkshake. Um, all right. Well, that's great. Uh, I think that's it today for our cheese stuff. Um, we, we have one more section, Liz. You're welcome to hang around for that. But I wanted okay. to say again, thank you, Liz Thorpe, for being here. Um, please go buy her book on Amazon. It is called uh, <laughs> The Book of Cheese and Cheese Chronicles. Her YouTube channel is The People's Cheese. Or on Instagram, you can follow her at, at Liz Thorpe Cheese. Uh, thanks, Liz. And um, thanks, guys. Uh, we do, do you have a? Do, oh yeah, do, yeah. I'm sorry. Do, do, you, yeah. do you do you have a partner or anything? Do you, do you have anyone you, you're dating or anything? <laughs> I'm not asking like I'm not asking, oh, like yeah. a life partner. Yeah, like <laughs> like do you have a, you know I don't know you might have a girlfriend a boyfriend whatever but but like could you date someone who doesn't eat cheese or would you just be fuck this idiot? I no, and I broadly just like I could never spend a lot of time with a vegan like that would be too hard for me. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> a vegetarian, yeah. no problem, but like cheese and eggs to me are like yeah. I can't I can't spend any time parts of my yeah. life. With What's vegans, up, uh... my girlfriend's a vegan. Oh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> his girlfriend is a vegan. So. Oh, this we I have to eat vegan cheese things, and she stands over me like this, going, "That cheese is vegan. You can't <laughs> taste the difference, can you?" I'm like, "I can. I fully, <laughs> I, fully, <laughs> I fully can taste the difference." Because you're not tasting the difference. Yeah. Um, so uh, one more thing, Liz. I'm sorry. We always like to ask our guests if there's because this the the, the concept of the show is having some knowledge that other people might not have and trying like Jim gave the giraffe example. Is there some crazy obscure fact or something about cheese that we, smells. that we could, <laughs> that we could have to, to, that people can take with them so that they can tell people that they know about cheese. It's just one or two things. Yes. We've actually done a lot of them. Like, but I would say a good one is ounce for ounce. There's more fat in hard cheese than in soft cheese. Really? So people always like don't want to eat the soft, creamy cheeses because they're like, oh, there's so much fat in it. I love soft and cheese. like, actually, if you eat an ounce of that versus an ounce of a hard cheese, you're eating less fat. If you so had, if you had, all the soft, if you had, eat all the, the white, creamy cheeses. If you had one cheese for the rest of your life, what would it be? A poisse. What one's that it's one? It's a like really stinky French cheese that comes in a box, and it's that that the assy kind. That's uh, my favorite. The salty, meaty, mm. stinky cheeses. But you can't put those. you can't put them on burgers. Well, no, we it's already okay. established I American really cheese. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I would just I, I would put it on a burger and I would be happy with that. Yeah, yeah. Just like right. a smear of it. Oh, it would sure. work. With a schmear. Okay, so here's our last segment, Jim. This is what we do. Each show is, uh, it's called I Do Know About That or I Might Know About That. We're uh -huh. gonna change uh -huh. it. This is a subject that we've talked to Jim and he says that he thinks he knows about and he'll be able to answer three questions, no problem. Do you like a Philly cheese steak, please? Yeah, I do like a Philly, but that's uh, like the ultimate processed cheese. That's no, like, no, no, no. Yeah, you, that's you like get the it, cheese whiz, the, you, the, no, the, the you, spray bottle. You get it with the provolone, the provolone on it. Very good, very good. No, no, you can't. No, that's, you can't. You've got to get it with the American. It's like all about the sweet processed cheese. That's what makes it good. Oh, no, I like the provolone on me. You're going to go, go bad. you got to go bad. All right, so, so things I do know about. I, I, I have to yeah. stop talking about cheese. Okay. Kelly's right. unwrapping cheese in the microphone now. <laughs> Um, so here's our <laughs> here's our last topic for I do know about this today's topic uh, Jim is cheeseburgers. <laughs> All right, yeah, so I gotta yeah. stop talking about cheese. Yeah. Okay, cheeseburger. We tie it in. We tie it in. <laughs> ask, ask me any question. Okay, I'll, here's ask here, me no question. I'll tell you some lies. Three three, three questions about cheeseburgers. Um, who is uh, said to have invented the cheeseburger? Um, well, the 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 burger it comes from Germany. Hamburger from the from the country of Hamburg, and it's like how the Germans like to make uh, uh, formed meat is a big thing I'm in sorry. their culture. Schnitzels and yeah, yeah. and things like that, right? Yeah, but this I'm sorry, I, I Wait, said, I'm I said, I said, I said the question. I said the cheeseburger though. I'm getting to that for us. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so what happened was uh, when when Fritz Hamburg from Ham Hamburg came mm -hmm. over with the hamburger, 
You're not getting a, you're not getting graded on believability. To, 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 to answer, okay, yeah. so the cheeseburger oh. <laughs> was invented by I'm going to say it would have been someone in America. I'm going to say the invention happened in 1920, and it was done by uh, a man called Ronald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might get 1926. Pretty good. Yep. It was a guy. Uh, coincidentally, named Lionel Sternberger. Ah. And it was in Pasadena, California. That's who's credited with it at the age of 19, 16 at the place called The Right Spot. And California's had, the, the he, hamburger he, central. Like, I know the, 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 but like, so McDonald's started in San Bernardino, In and Out Burger. Well, like in and Out Burger, you can't beat In and Out Burger. I will fucking, I, I will fight you <laughs> if you say any different. In and Out's your number one. And I love all burgers. Five Guys, very good. Shake Shack, okay. I like Shake Shack. Okay, it's good. Not amazing. In and out. Number one. <laughs> okay. Um, and then uh, in the United States. What a burger can suck a dick, by the way. <laughs> All you people in Texas. <laughs> in the United States, National Cheeseburger Day is celebrated annually on what day? A Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah. I thought maybe you know it's September eighteenth. I celebrate it every day, <laughs> and 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 it's always in my heart. Yeah, okay, I love hamburgers. Um, and then the last one: How many uh, a McDonald's makes an average of? This is kind of a crossover. How many burgers a day do they sell? Okay, so they used to say over a billion served. McDonald's has been around since the nineteen sixties. 60- so a billion served. Uh, so you, per day, how many? Did, yeah, but I'm going to have to do I, the maths. I have to divide <laughs> it by. I have to divide it by sixty years. It's three hundred and sixty-five days in a year. And the Nobody answer. Nobody thinks you could do this math. <laughs> in your head. The square an, root of twenty-five. The, the, answer, the answer is uh, hundred thousand burgers a day worldwide. Our our what our information we got is six million four hundred eighty thousand hamburgers every day of the calendar year because it's the whole world. Don't forget. I'm talking about on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the most recently published numbers we found show McDonald's selling forty five hundred hamburgers every minute of the day. Whoa! Wow, it's a lot of dead cows. Really? So, um, I don't think it's from a cow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> the fillet uh, of fish was introduced because, for the Catholics because they wouldn't eat the hamburgers oh, on the Fridays, the Friday. and they weren't selling enough, so they brought in the fillet of fish. And people say, "Hmm, cheese doesn't go with everything." It's on a fucking fillet of fish, people. <laughs> and they used to give you half a slice of cheese. They used to cut the cheese in half for the fillet of fish, and now they give you a full slice. Mm. Well, that's progress. That's a good wrap up right uh, there. Liz, thanks for being here. Jim, anything else you want to say? Thanks for having me. Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Give them what they want. Give them what they want. <laughs> thanks for being on the show, Liz. Thank you, Forrest. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for everyone who listens. If you're enjoying the podcast, get the word out there. It's still new. We're still getting more followers each day. And uh, tell your friends and uh, download it. Yeah, you and- go go to Apple Podcasts. Rate, subscribe review, on subscribe. there. And on YouTube, Spotify, anywhere else you listen to podcasts. And please like or follow whatever you want to say, our Instagram page. I D K A T podcast and give it give it a nice review and give them what they want, give them what they want, people. That's not. And if you're ever in an an argument and you don't know what's going on and you want to still win the argument, you just go. Well, I don't know about that, and you walk away. Good night, America. (laughs) 